and you will find that the spirit of the books is captured in, in what we're doing. Uh, and if you read the books, you'll be, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. The characters remain the same. The characters remain the same. Some genders change, um, and um, and so, and some conceptions of the virals just visually change, just to ground them a little more in a world where you can watch them every week. Um, so, um, so yeah. I was actually gonna follow up on that. Uh, there are so many depictions of zombie, vampire, infected people on screens. Um, how does yours differ from that, from those? Um, well, ours is sort of grounded in science. Ours are lab generated, so um, so we grew our own, um, and um, uh, and so I think I don't know what else like. It's legal now in California to throw your own vampire. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we we tried to base the, um, the 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 physical symptoms, uh, you know, as close as we could on, you know, obviously it's going to be some kind of junk science because it's vampires and they don't exist or do they? I don't know. Uh, but but we tried to. Um, Create uh, a, a, a makeup and a special effect where it was, you know, because blood is a theme, because um, they feed on blood. We wanted the veins to kind of pop out and, and have like a uh, just an organic feeling, so it felt grounded scientifically. Mm -hmm. The other thing is our vampires are psychic; they can get into your dreams and really mess with your head, which is, I think, a really fun, fun device we can use in our show. Okay, so, as I was saying, I have a column where I'm using celebrities and other favorite mobile apps, and that can be anything. Um, what's the app that you guys would think you use the most? Unrelated to the show? It could be related to the show. Well, I guess it's related to the show because we, we talk on Marco Polo. Do you know Marco Polo? Come on. Great apps. It's like a video walkie talkie. Okay. All right. Okay, great. What's the dramatic you find me on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, how do you describe sort of the dramatic thrust of the show? You know what I mean? As this thing is unfolding, for an audience that doesn't know what the passage is, I mean, how would you sort of describe its mission statement, shall we say, in this first season? Um, well. The scientists of Project, uh, the first season takes place at Project Nile, which is a secret government medical facility where they're um, working with this virus that they found in Bolivia that has the potential to cure all disease, but also has some vampiric side effects. So, so they're trying to work the kinks out, um, um, and they and then um, and then uh, they realize that the virus attacks the neurons in the brain. Children have billions more neurons than adults, and so they decide that they need a child, um, and that if they can give the virus to a child, uh, she will come through with no side effects and have all the upside and none of the downside. Um, so it's just, uh, I mean, that's sort of the premise of the show, and when you get to Project Noah, you realize that there's more going on. They have experimented on 12 death row inmates before their child gets there, before Amy, who's played by Sonia Sidney. Um, and uh, what you sort of start to realize in the pilot and moving forward is the 12 vampires downstairs that used to be death row mates, which is like a bench of supervillains, uh, they have powers that we haven't yet discovered and they want to get out. And so, and so that's kind of the thrust and the tension of the show. Do we learn more about their individual stories? Oh yeah, yeah. So we're going to get yeah. the background on yeah. that. No, it's juicy and good and character-based and sexy and fun and great. So we're like I, oh, yeah. that's I also think that part of the engine is, is it's the pilot is narrated from the point of view of the little girl from the future. And what you learn is that what, you, what you're watching is, I mean, you don't know it exactly, but it's the origin of, the end, of how the world ends. So, so that in itself, so what you're watching is really prologue to the apocalypse. So how much do you, have you gone and mapped out or thought of past the first season? Well, we have the books, and there's a lot of material in the books. They're big and dense and great, and so um, we're, we're 
following the path that the books do, for sure. Because I was gonna. I'm sorry. Well, I was just gonna say how much, like, time wise, like how much of the book, or like, are you consolidating things from the books into now and not necessarily exactly in the order, or would like the first season be like half the first book, or like, or are you only looking at three seasons, or? Um, Justin Cronin has provided us with enough material for seasons and seasons of television, <laughs> so I'm happy to report that. Um, I uh, uh, I think um, the the first book has a couple of seasons in it. Has I, would, I mean has maybe three seasons in it. It's it's big. It's like a it's a big book. <laughs> well, I was going to ask, sort of jumping off of that, um, at some point in the book, the narrative it's not really a spoiler. It's like it is kind book, of a spoiler. Uh, jumps yeah. ahead, yeah. shall yeah. we say, a okay. fair amount of time. Yeah. Um, so is that something that you are ever would ever consider doing? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the plan. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit, sort of, um, uh, about the relationship at the center of the show, this, this pseudo father daughter bond that develops? You want to go or should I? Um, sure. Yeah, I'll go. Okay, go okay ahead. great. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Brad Wolgast is a, uh, a foot soldier who works for Project Noah, and he is the one who has collected the, these, the, the previous inmates, the death row inmates, for this experiment. And he sort of looks the other way, doesn't want to know about it. Um, when Amy comes along, what, what, uh, when they, they, they figure out that it's the neurons, so they want to experiment on a younger person because they think that the side effects of the vampirism won't happen, and the only thing that will happen are the good effects, which is the immortality. Um, so when he meets her, what is triggered is the loss in his life of his daughter three years ago, uh, and so he becomes a surrogate father to her, uh, and then ultimately goes rogue. Uh, from Project Noah, and they have to track him down because they need him to be quiet and they need to the work. So, at the heart of the show is this relationship between these two very people who find themselves uh, very lonely and need each other to survive. So, is it like two parallel storylines we're going with? They're on the run, and then there's also the lab stuff going on, or are they always intersecting? No, those narratives are going to meet. Okay, yeah. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>